Do you know what slossa it is? It's really weird looking, but it tastes so good and Entrepreneur Magazine agrees with me. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Carissa Dunphy, the host of the Small Businesses Do It Better show. This is episode number 43. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, tonight we have an awesome guest. She's the co-owner of Slossa, which is this funny colored gourmet topping for everything. It's super good too, and I'm going to eat some. I have a nice huge bowl of it right here. Um, and her name's Julie Boucher, so she's going to join us in just a minute. Um, I first want to let you guys know that this show is sponsored by Ovalie. And if you're interested in hosting your own online show like this one, then um, contact Ovalie TV. They produce my show and others like it, and they want to do the same for you. They are a brand building engine fueled by live streamed content. And it is an amazing platform for you to push out your brand to your audience. It's live, it works, and it's super fun. So contact Ovali today by going to ovali.tv or you can email them at producer at ovali.tv. Um, super awesome. So I'm in the Ovali TV studio. As you can see, Christmas exploded everywhere. It is crazy. Everything is Christmas. It's really fun though. And Julie has her Christmas tree up on her end too. So we'll look at that in just a minute. Um, couple things I want to talk about really quick. This is super exciting and I want to thank all of you whoopee that's for steve and he's in the chat right now for those of you in the chat if you have any questions for myself or our guest tonight um, please let me know and i will relay that um but the big news is that over the weekend this show in itunes um and their video podcasts we hit number 23 in their business category so if you look at the screenshot we're right in between top ted and oprah and suze orman which is insane. I checked it, as you can see by the clock on my phone. It was 1.17 a.m. I kept seeing if it would move either way. Super awesome. So thanks, everybody, for watching and subscribing. Um, if you're watching live right now on the website, on the top corner is a link to our iTunes pages. So if you want to subscribe so you can get them sent to wherever it is that you get your iTunes at. Um, so thanks, every again, everyone, again for watching. Um, so I want to talk to Julie because I love this loss of stuff. Okay, so I'll just get her on right now. So thanks, Julie, for joining us. No, thank you for having me, Carissa. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a part of Slossa. Well, um, I graduated from college in 2000. Um, I was very fortunate in, that in March, before I graduated in May, I was offered a job by um, IMG, which um, is one of the largest uh, sports marketing agencies in the world. Um, that's where I spent the bulk of my um, professional career. Uh, so for 11 years, I worked in sports marketing, uh, worked on some NFL and NASCAR properties in the beginning and, and um, very quickly transitioned fully into NASCAR. Uh, fortunately, during my time um, in my other life, uh, I was able to work with a client called General Mills for about nine and a half years um, on their motorsport sponsorship. So um, I got huge knowledge just ingrained in me of the food industry that I really wasn't seeking out, but it just kind of absorbed in my brain. Um, so I got to work with dozens of brands, food service division, sales reps from all over the country, and importantly, um, I was able to um, work with sales reps and, and the, the customers. Um, I got a chance to know a lot of their customers over the years. Um, so um, uh, in 2007, a professional NASCAR driver, Bobby Labonte, asked if I would leave my company and join and help start his company, um, which I did, um, continuing my work with General Mills. And I left um, at the end of the 2010 NASCAR season or toward the end of it um, and decided to become my own boss because why not? Um, I had confidence in my abilities and my goal 
um, in my secondary life, my current life, was to help small companies grow. So um, fortunately, it, probably about five months into my venture, um, I got a Facebook note from Judson Odom um, and, and asked for a phone call, and I, I chatted with him. And um, it led to a meeting in April of 2011. So this is just over a year ago. Um, and, uh, you know, he asked if I could help. Um, obviously, tasting Slalsa and knowing how different he had something, you know, it, it was very um, exciting for me to be able to potentially build a brand from, from nothing. So Slalsa came from uh, a recipe that Judson's mother uh, created over 30 years ago. Um, she has since passed away, um, but he tried to get the company going in 1998, um, having a full-time job as, as an electrician. Um, he just couldn't get it off the ground. He couldn't get into grocery stores. Um, so that's when I came in um, to, um, we had to do some rebranding of the label, we had to reduce costs, we had to establish a marketing budget, we had to do a lot of things before I could even approach retailers. But um, I hit the pavement um, and uh, we've approached retailers and we got in our very first store, Ingalls Markets, in um, October of 2011. So, you know, about five months after starting to work on it. Um, and then it's just been rolling since then. Very awesome. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, the growth that she's had because it is quite remarkable. Um, another thing that's quite amazing. So on the show, we've had uh, missed weeks from holidays. We've had extra weeks. And so our episodes kind of the numbers never stayed the same every week. But this episode is number 43, which is weird because it's a very significant number to Julie and she happened to be the guest on this week. So tell us why number 43 is ironic. Well, it, it is ironic. And when I saw uh, when I saw the episode last week um, with Rob on it, I saw he was episode 42 and I thought, oh, am I 43? Um, that number keeps popping up in my life. Um, within NASCAR, I work with Petty Enterprises um, at great length and the infamous or the famous number 43 car driven by Richard Petty and then um, all the other drivers who drove after him, um, seven time Winston Cup champion or uh, Sprint Cup champion now. So um, so I just thought it was funny that, you know, the number 43 popped up as the episode number. That's crazy. It's funny. It must mean <laughs> something, right? Absolutely. Okay. So of course the question that everybody is wondering is what the heck is Slossa? So um, Steve, the cat guy in the <laughs> chat room, says that he has an immense web of irrational food phobias. Co so put him at ease and tell him what's in it. Rob kind of summarized it for him, and he wants to know if there's a non-mustard version. Okay. Slalsa, first of all, is the condiment that very well might change Steve's life. Um, I've seen <laughs> it happen time and time again. Um, it is a cross between a slaw and a salsa. Any way you'd eat either one of those things, think about a hot dog, brat, burger, pinto beans, pulled pork, fish, tortilla chips. You can use it as a sandwich fish. spread. There's a million mm -hmm. recipes that goes in. It works. Far more, um, I guess, far more versatile than anything in the relish category. And we're looking to change people's minds as to what a relish is or what a relish could be. Um, predominantly cabbage-based. So I... I talk about the slaw. And I will have people come up to me and say, oh, well, I don't eat coleslaw. Well, the reason why they don't is either A, it's laden with mayonnaise and ours isn't, yeah. or B, it's completely raw and ours has a cooked process to it. So we still have that crunch. Um, Slalsa is also fat-free, cholesterol-free, gluten-free, and a lot less sodium than traditional condiments. So like a third of the sodium a ketchup has, roughly half the sodium a jarred salsa has. So um, it's a great alternative to um, many of the condiments probably in your refrigerator right now. Um, and, and I know it, Steve doesn't like mustard. Um, this isn't like an Alabama mustard slaw that you better like mustard to enjoy it. Um, I didn't you, taste the mustard at all. Yeah, you're not going to get a ton, an overwhelming mustard flavor at all. Just like there's vinegar in it, but you're not going to get an overwhelming vinegar yeah. at all as well. So Okay, um, so there's original, which is... Yeah. Wait, where are we? Original. Right okay, and then there's And then spicy. we have spicy. Yep. And um, in 2013, we've already um, developed a garlic and garlic spicy. Oh, 
Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you were in last, I guess this weekend or last week, you were featured in Entrepreneur's Holiday Gift Guide as a great foodie gift this holiday season. So congratulations. That's huge. That's super awesome. Um, we just lost Julie, so hopefully it'll connect really quick. Um, on Entrepreneur, I'll quote it because it's really funny. They wrote, we admit it, skepticism reigned when we first saw this jar of chartreuse slaw. We tasted it, heaven anyone? We especially like the slaw smeared on celery. Okay, so seriously, this stuff is amazing. When I got this in the mail, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to eat here? Because this color, it is like seriously yellow, lime greenish yellow, and you don't know what to expect. So... It was very weird. So I have some in a bowl here so you can kind of see it. It looks like the texture and the shape of relish. And there's a little bit of carrots in it. But you really can't taste the mustard at all. So I'm going to totally eat some right now. Awesome. It's so good. I'm not even kidding you. It like has zest to it, but it's not like sour and it's not spicy and it's not... Well, I'm not eating the spicy one, but... Yeah, you'll get a little sweet and then a little heat. So and good. You got you have a lot of crunch. It's seriously so, yeah. like so good. I I you can't describe what it tastes like. It's like five flavors in one. But Steve, I'll tell you, you can't taste the mustard at all. And seriously, it, it's like one of those things where you you can't explain it. You just have to eat it and then you're gonna put it on everything because it's that good. I'm I'm not even just saying that. It's freaking good. <laughs> Sorry, but it's like really good. Um, so anyways, so, um, a lot of people's like bucket list is to get in entrepreneur or Inc or whatever magazine. So tell us about the process really quick, how you got entrepreneur to notice you or how you submitted this or what did you do here to get featured by entrepreneur? So that's well, huge. They, ha they have an annual holiday gift guide and this was really, I didn't really know about it before. Um, but I, I had actually written a little business tip lesson on in the shark tank where um, my it's called dogs read dog magazines, you have to go to it to, to read it. But um, basically, it gave, gives a lot of lessons on how you can pitch your own PR. And, um, and I'm very, very aggressive at that. Um, you know, they had basically a contest where you submit now the food category is immensely competitive. Um, so I don't know if there were thousands of entrants, but, you know, I, I definitely put together the pitch that I wanted to put together, piqued their interest. They said, send the samples. And then um, before I knew it, um, we were listed as a top 10. So it was truly an honor to be um, noticed by them. We've got other, you know, big magazines coming in the future um, that some are a little bit bigger than Entrepreneur Magazine, but to, to be noticed by them. And for them to recognize, you know, small business and small startup food businesses is is an honor. It truly is. That is phenomenal. And I know from talking to all these products, the owners and like a, a Wired Waffle specifically, the food industry, he was saying, is just it moves at a really slow pace and it's just harder to get where you need to quickly, um, which leads me to my next question or two. Um Slow growth is typically the way businesses grow. They don't just take off like you did. Um, but when you have something that's so unique and different, like Slasa, you have to kind of like get it out there. So right. how did your background and what did you do? How did it get you moving? Um, well, I think I get myself moving, um, first of all. Um, and, and it helps have a great product and a unique product. Um, but you have got to bust your tail um, to, to get everything you can. Um, if, if someone tells me no in my head that says, not now, but check back in with me every quarter and update me on your, pro your progress. Um, so, um, you know, uh, knowing that, and a lot of small food companies have difficulty because they're not reinvesting their profits back into their company to do marketing. The biggest thing that I can come to the table with to a buyer meeting not only is, you know, hey, we've got a unique product, you have nothing else like this, but here's how we're gonna be marketing this product, and here's the dollars that we're putting toward, and here's all the things that we're gonna do for you. That sells it more than anything. I mean, you know, luckily I'm not, I don't have a barbecue sauce because there's a million barbecue sauces out there, and that would be much tougher, and we do have something different, but 
um, I mean, you've got to bring the marketing program to these buyers because either if, if you don't do that, they're going to ask you for a slot fee, um, whether it's a free fill or, or a certain dollar amount just to get shelf space. I haven't paid a slot fee to date because wow. um, I, tell, I tell them, look, I need to put that money into marketing so it sells, so it takes off. Mm -hmm. And I think the experienced buyers recognize a product that um, has potential like ours or a product that may just be like a lot of other products they have and they need to go ahead and get that money up front. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna. It's not gonna last on the shelf. So I could totally see like running into you at like Target or whatever. Hey, Julie, how's it going? And you're like, oh, you got to try Slasa. And then you open your car and you have like forks and coolers, and you're like, here, try some. Yeah, I'm. I'm highly. I've always been highly competitive. Um, I was a college athlete, and um, you know, every like I don't know. I can multitask. I, I stay organized. I stay on top of things. Um, I, you know, I think it's just my first. Oh, I think we just lost her again. We'll just wait. She'll come back on in a second. Um, if you have any questions for Julie in the chat room, let me know. Um, Steve, the cat drawing guy, seriously, I can see why he has c comedy shows. I'm As soon as the camera goes off, I'm just dying of laughter here, and the producer's laughing at me because I'm laughing at the computer. Um, he wants to put Slasa on his s'mores. I don't know how that would be. That would be a little weird. Um... But I guess, I don't know, they might catch on fire, might have trouble with that one. Um, let us know how that goes, Steve. And he also, I'll have to tell Julie this when she comes back, but uh, he wants slossage made. I guess would you put slossage in a dog and make a slossage dog all in one? I don't know. You should talk to her about that, Steve. So she'll um, hopefully be back on in just a second. I lost her again. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so Julie was talking about how she marketed Slossa and how tough the food industry is and how she didn't pay anything for shelf space, which is incredible. <laughs> Steve's just killing me here. Um, these pictures are marketing in, in them themselves. Yeah, these pictures. So there's a Slossa dog, Rob Merlino, hot dog man. I'm sure you've seen that like a gazillion times in your own house. Slossa burgers. I'm just going to eat some more. Um, there's Slossa again. Those look good. Okay, I'm just calling Julie again. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I got I'm her. I'm sorry, I'm here. No so problem. Sorry. We're just talking. Uh, Steve, cat drawing guy, thinks you should make slossage. Slossage? Well, yeah. slossage tastes great on any kind of tubular meat. I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere, I'm sure. And I think um, somebody wanted, um, I think it was Lynn. She asked what Slossa is good on for vegans. For vegans? Um, well, I mean, it, it's a great sandwich spread. Um, really, um, you know, if, if you do wraps or, um, you know, I know of some people who just drizzle it over salads. Um, if you look at the Entrepreneur Magazine, they said that they dip, um, well, you could dip tortilla chips in it, but they mm, dip nachos um, would be killer. They, they dip celery in it. And I hadn't heard of that before. I hear all sorts of things. I've heard ice cream. I've heard peanut butter sandwiches. I've heard, I don't know about all that, but I can tell you it is good on tubular meats. <laughs> tubular meats. That's an interesting <laughs> way to phrase it. And Steve also said he was going to try it on his s'mores. I don't know. Yeah. It, you know what? And also pairs really well with soft cheeses. So like either a cream cheese or a pimento cheese on top of oh. a cracker with salsa on top or a pimento cheese and salsa sandwich. Or you can do um, grilled cheese sandwiches with salsa in them. Oh, I like haven't well. eaten dinner yet. Can you tell? I'm just going nuts here. <laughs> oh, this this uh, little bowl I have is going to be empty in just a minute. Um, okay. So I want to ask you a couple more questions before we okay. go on to the, to the product. Um, so 13 months ago when you launched, you're now in over 3,500 stores nationwide, which is incredible. Yeah. So yeah. explain this. This is unheard of. Um, you know, I think it's, it's all a part of being aggressive, um, to think that, um, you know, when I, Ingalls was the first one who brought us aboard, about just under 200 stores. Um, in, based out of Western North Carolina, and um, that was October. I went and I had a meeting with Walmart in Bentonville in, I think, about the 
same time that first shipment was going out. So we didn't even have sales. Um, Walmart accepted us right away. Um, we did 140 store test this past summer and we're going to be launching in late April with quite a few more stores. So that doesn't even include is, is included in that 3,500 plus total. Um, we're in all the Kroger stores, um, in some of their other banners, like the Dillon's out in Kansas, all public stores, most all the Piggly Wiggly's, Food City, all Meyer stores. Um, you know, I'm very, very excited about our future. I had my first international meeting in January, which is exciting. Um, and, you know, um, it thing, you know, things are looking up, but we're, we're smart about our growth. We're investing all, the, our, all of our dollars back in. Um, you know, whenever I invest in marketing, I have got to see a return on my investment or I'm not going to even consider it. So mm -hmm. I do put that demand back on people pitching me ideas um, to market the brand. So um, I'm, I'm very, very strict and stern in terms of that. Completely. And um, you can, if you aren't near any of the stores like myself, I will have to order online because I'm yes. up in the tiny little corner called Seattle where nothing comes. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Slossa is having a Slossum holiday sale on their website. So tell us about that and how long it lasts, where we can get it, where they have to go and all that okay, yep. delicious well stuff. We want people to go to our retailers first. So we're sold everywhere from Boston to Florida and North Dakota down to Texas and most everywhere in between. We still have to get up in New England a little bit more. So we want people to go to our retailers first. Check out our list. It's always updated at slawsa.com, S-L-A-W-S-A.com. Um, but if not, it, obviously Entrepreneur Magazine says it makes a great holiday gift. Um, we, can, we will sell a six-pack, so original, spicy, or a mixed case. Ship it anywhere in the continental U.S. for $19.99 plus a flat $10 shipping. So considering if you want to ship out to the West Coast, that 11-pound package is probably going to cost $16, $17. Well, we're only charging the $10 for the shipping. So it's a really, really good deal. Um, I promise we have never had a complaint about it yet. Um, I think in all of my shipments, hundreds and hundreds of shipments, um, on our website. I mean, we push people to the stores, but um, we've only had one jar broken. And of course, we've reimbursed um, back for that. So, um, you know, it is truly a slossom sale. It is our best sale of the year. So it's um, awesomely slossom. Yeah. It's, and, it's, it's good. And, Just go there and order it because it's, yep. it's amazing. And if, if your stores don't carry it, we have a one sheeter on our website and um, it's actually posted on our Facebook page now. All you have to do is print it out, fill it out, take it to your grocery store manager and just give it to them. Oh, you don't that's even a good have, idea. Yeah. So, so mm. you can ask for it, but at least giving them a piece of paper, you know, it's got a better chance of going up the... That's a uh, really good yeah. marketing idea. So for those of you who are trying to get into stores, that's, that's really yeah. smart. Yep. But consumers have such power and so many retailers want to make sure their consumers are staying happy. <laughs> <laughs> seriously i will because it's really good okay so before i let you go uh, again we can um go to slossa.com and um how long does this sale last it goes through the end of december so all the way through december 31st okay and then tell us where we can find you on social media um well our our twitter is at slossa facebook is backslash slossa um, and then my personal Twitter is at Jules, J-U-L-E-S, Boucher, B-U-S-H-A. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for being a guest and so much for involving yourself in this company so that we can all taste this amazing chartreuse gourmet topping because it is it is phenomenal. It's so good. <laughs> If anyone has questions, they can feel free to reach out through our Facebook page or through our website. You know, I'm the one answering all those things. So, um, you know, feel free to ask me any questions that you have, especially if you are a, a young food company and you just need some advice. I'm more than happy to provide. And she's super respons responsive, too, on social media. Um, <laughs> Steve wants to know if any jars have been eaten in transit. <laughs> in transit. <laughs> it's funny the ups guy i'll just see oh slasa i saw about this stuff on tv i'm just gonna eat it oh god damn it sorry um anyways julie thank you so much for joining us so much for amazing advice. amazing amazing okay so now it's time for the product um which is eco nuts this week 
Um, linking her website up in the back. So again, this week's product is Econuts. Um, Mona, the owner, is in the live chat right now. If you have any questions for her, feel free to ask them. Um, all right. So what the heck is Econuts? You saw these guys on Shark Tank a couple weeks ago. Econuts is an organic laundry soap. And I took them out of the box so you can see them. They are um, dried. Let me phrase this correctly. Where did it go? They are dried um, fruit shells from a tree in the Himalayas. So they're, um, I don't know, they're like the size of an olive. And um, there's five of them that come in this box. This is the small um, box, and this is 10 loads of laundry. They come in all different sizes. Um, let me look at my brochure here. So you can get, it's so much more cost effective and um, smaller in size than buying like a giant thing. You can get them all the way up to 360 load boxes, which is going to last for a long time. Okay, so what you do when you get these, there's also um, liquid. So these ones you use um, one tiny little capful for a whole load. And if you have a HE washer, then you use half a capful. And um, all the packaging is completely recyclable. This is a metal bottle and a cardboard box. So what you do if you have the nuts is you put them in the bag and then you close the bag and you put them in your washer and you wash the clothes. And then you don't put it in the dryer though. You leave it in the washer. And these ones can go 10 loads or more-ish. And um, so these are awesome for sensitive skin. Um, for those with skin allergies, they're 100% natural, chemical and fragrance free. They're biodegradable, hypoallergenic, safe for septic systems. Um, you don't need fabric softener. I love how they word this. It fluffs and softens naturally. And um, they also have a um, complete household cleaning line and bath and body products too. So you can literally go to Econuts and get all your cleaning supplies from their website. And it's all um, the same organic and sustainable. Um, so the cool thing is that these trees keep growing and they're not... They're not creating more waste because all their packaging is recyclable and it's all organic and safe. And I mean, everybody, like when you have a baby or whatever, you have to buy separate laundry soap so you can use this for everybody. Um, so Mona, thanks so much for joining us in the chat. Um, yeah, sh like she says in there, it is a fruit shell, but it's a hard shell and it's kind of, it looks like a nut, but it doesn't have any nut allergies. So I don't know if you can hear it. It's, it's hard. They're really interesting. Um, I'm fascinated by these. They're really cool. Okay, so their website is econutsoap.com, as you can see back here. And um, laundry detergent, household cleaning, natural bath and body, and wholesale. So go to econutsoap.com to get all of your cleaning stuff. These are fabulous. And they were on Shark Tanks, too, so you can go to their website or Google it or whatever and find their um, appearance on Shark Tank, which is really cool. And congratulations to you guys for getting on Shark Tank. That's awesome. Um, okay, so again, econutsoap.com. So I want to thank everybody for watching tonight, episode 43. Um, if you have a second, please go in the top corner, click our iTunes link and subscribe and rate the show um, because we were last weekend we were at number 23 in the business category and we want to get higher. We want to continue to stay above Oprah. Awesome. So that's because of all of you going there and rating us and subscribing. Um, next week, um, Lynn's in the chat right now, but next week our guest is Lynn Higgin and she's the owner of Crazy Bitch Tea. And we'll explain this next week if you want to tune in. This I love that name. And there's a reason behind it, so you'll have to tune in and see why. And the product that I'm going to be featuring is the Kick Rest. And this is super cool. I won't spill the beans on this one either. Basically, you can make your feet feel fabulous wherever you're sitting, essentially. And it's soft and fluffy and all the good things that come with it. Okay, so come back next week, Tuesday. We are live at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern, or you can watch past episodes at smallbusinessdoitbetter.com. And thank you so much for watching.